All right, so time for video number two in our series of pre-lecture videos. So again, today is going to be uh, fairly basic. Uh, many of you probably already know a lot of this material, maybe all of the material even. Um, and if you do, that's good. Um, if you don't need to take notes, that's good. If you do, that, that's fine too. Again, point of these first few videos is to make sure everyone knows everything about the basics before we move on to actual status class. So today I'm going to deal with vectors. Uh, again, should be familiar to a lot of you. So pretty much anything um, in engineering is either a scalar or a vector. Scalar um, only has a magnitude, does not have a direction associated with it. So just, just a number, uh, length, mass, speed, those are all just numbers. Uh, vector, on the other hand, uh, also has a direction associated with it. So not just a number, but also a direction as well. And um, these are things like position, force, and velocity. So force acts in a certain direction. Velocity is moving in a certain direction. Uh, position is with respect to something. So you're going a certain distance in a certain direction from something. So those are all uh, vector quantities. Vector is usually drawn by arrows. Um, the arrow indicates both its magnitude and direction. So the magnitude is basically how long this arrow is. Direction is whatever direction it's going in. Uh, usually these quantities are written either in boldface um, or with an arrow over top of it. Uh, we'll see both in this course. I do kind of both depending on what system I'm writing in, whether it's in PowerPoint or freehand, whatever it is. So um, some of them you'll see bold, some of them you see arrows, just whatever is easiest for me at the time. Another thing I want to deal with is a nice little trigonometry review. So again, stuff that you should know. A few little questions here. What is C? What are sine, cosine, and tangent of that angle? And then what's the angle? So I want you to quickly figure that out. Pause the video uh, when you're done with it. Come back for the answers. So hypotenuse, C, um, simple Pythagorean theorem. This is the right triangle. I should have been specific before, but this is, is in fact a right triangle. So a squared plus b squared is c squared gives me that c is five meters. And then sine, cosine, and tangent, um, basically just remembering Sokotoa, sine opposite over hypotenuse, cosine adjacent over hypotenuse, and tangent opposite over adjacent. So based on this triangle, uh, opposite of this angle is four. So sine is four over five. The hypotenuse we just found. Cosine uh, adjacent sides, three over five, and then tangent opposite over adjacent to four over three. And then to find the angle itself, uh, you basically have three options. You can either take the inverse sine of uh, four fifths, which is 0.8, or inverse cosine of 0.6, or inverse tangent of 1.33. Whichever way you do it, you should get 53.1 degrees um, any way you do it. So that's just a little trigonometry review. Because uh, again, angles, um, vectors having directions, angles are generally always involved. So there's lots of sines and cosines that show up with them, as we'll see throughout the course. Scalar multiplication. So if I take a vector and multiply it by a scalar, that really doesn't do anything to the um, direction of the vector, but it does affect its magnitude. So if I multiply a vector by a number bigger than one, um, that vector is going to get bigger in terms of its magnitude. So it's going to get longer if you want to, again, go back to the graphical interpretation. Um, but the direction is um, mostly unaffected. So for example, if I have some vector a down here, and then I take that vector a multiply it by two. So two is a scalar. That's why it's scalar multiplication. Um, my vector is just twice as long. So again, magnitude indicated by its length. 2a is twice as long as a, but both going in the same direction. Now I said it doesn't entirely affect the direction, but there is one case, and that's if it's a negative scalar. So if I take my vector a and multiply it by negative one, so negative a, um, same magnitude, because its magnitude is still basically being multiplied by one, but the minus sign um, reverses x direction, so flipped 180 degrees, negative a um, compared to a. So that's why this wording up here um, does not change the angle of the direction. It's worded a bit weird because 
It usually doesn't change the direction, but if it's a minus sign, it changes it in a very specific way. Um, it doesn't change that actual angle, just makes it go completely opposite direction. A lot of times you have to add two vectors together. So vector addition, um, again, looking in the geometric sense, if I wanna add two vectors together, um, I start out with my first vector, uh, has some magnitude and direction. So in this case, I have my vector u, for example, start out with him. If I come along and if I wanna add v to u, so u plus v, what I can do is I can start my vector v at the end of vector u, then draw my vector v like that. And then where I started at the beginning of u to where I ended at the end of v, that vector is my vector u plus v. And that's called the resultant. So the resultant kind of means the result of addition of vectors. So u plus v is this diagonal vector of u and v. And notice it doesn't matter uh, which way I did this. So my first example, I started with u drew v at the end of u to get u plus v. I could start with v. So the same point down here, I'm gonna draw a vector v. So this is the same vector as that guy over there, just moved over. There's vector v. At the end of vector v, I start my vector u. So again, same as this vector down here, same magnitude and direction ends up over there. So again, if I, where I started, beginning of v, where I ended, end of u, that's this exact same vector, u plus v. So u plus v, same thing as v plus u, which makes sense. That's how normal math works as well. Two plus five is the same thing as five plus two. Same thing works for vectors. Doesn't matter which way you add them. Um, subtracting vectors is a little harder. The easiest way to subtract vectors, uh, in my opinion, is to kind of go back to definition of subtraction with negative numbers. So. Um, u minus v is the same thing as u plus negative v. And we know how to add vectors and we know what a negative sign in front of a vector means, means flips it in the exact opposite direction. So if I wanna take u minus v, what I do, I start out with my vector u. So again, this u is the same as the u I had before. Uh, this dashed line v was the same v I had before, but I don't wanna add v, I wanna add negative v. And as we all know, negative v flips that in the exact opposite direction. So u plus negative v is this vector down here. And that also then corresponds to u minus v. So that in my opinion is the easiest way to subtract vectors. Um, just add the negative of the second one. If I have more than one vector, if I wanna add two or three, or it doesn't really matter how many vectors together, all I have to do is follow the same procedure that I outlined before. So start off by drawing vector A. Wherever vector A ends, that's where vector B starts. Wherever vector B ends, that's where vector C starts. Wherever vector C ends, that's where vector D starts. And if you have more of these, just keep on going. Uh, but for these uh, four vectors all added together, start where I started, where A began, go to where I finished at the end of D and that long vector from beginning of A to end of D is all these four vectors added together, A plus B plus C plus D. A coplanar system essentially means a two-dimensional system. So everything can be written in the plane and that's generally um, like a plane of paper or a computer screen, you know, it's two-dimensional surface. Um, that's usually where you put your x and y coordinates. So the coplanar system is essentially a two-dimensional system. And when you set up your x and y coordinates, you want to make sure they're perpendicular to each other. Um, you're pretty much free to set up any coordinate system you want in this class. That's part of the problem, essentially. Um, but normally, x goes left and right, y goes up and down. Um, they are perpendicular to each other. So x is usually the horizontal component, y usually the vertical component. And to help us out with some vectors, it's useful to define something called unit vectors. So a unit vector is um, any vector basically whose magnitude is equal to one, so has a length of one. Uh, any vector that fits that category is technically a unit vector. We'll use some special unit vectors to help us with these directions. So there's gonna be a special unit vector in the X direction, a special unit vector in the Y direction. 
Um, those two special vectors are called i and j. So i is my special unit vector in the positive x direction. J is the special unit vector in the positive y direction. So essentially, again, using standard x and y coordinates, x positive to the right. So i goes to the right a, a distance of 1 because it's a unit vector. J goes up a distance of 1 because it's in the unit vector uh, in the positive y direction, which is up. And then with those unit vectors, I can decompose any um, coplanar vector anyway into its x and y components. So my vector v, any old vector v, will have some x component vx in the i direction and some y component vy in the j direction. And if I add those two together, that gives me back my vector um, overall vector v. So vx is called the horizontal component of v. vy is called the vertical component of v. Uh, as an example, I have some vector that goes from the point zero, zero, the origin, to some point three comma two. So th essentially three in the x direction, two in the y direction. And so the way I can do that is again, break it down into x and y components. So if I have its x component, that is uh, three times i. So take this unit vector i, multiply it by three. I then have this orange vector, same direction as i, but three times longer. So there's three i. Do the same thing for my j vector, I'll multiply him by two. So he goes again straight up, length of two. And then adding those two guys together, if I take this two j vector, put him at the end of my three i vector, I go up and I end up right at the end of my vector a. So three i plus two j gives me my vector a. So a can be written as three i plus two j, x and y components. So that was two-dimensional or coplanar vectors. Uh, we'll, be, we'll see those a lot. Um, in many cases, systems can be broken down into two-dimensional um, systems. If that's not the case, if I have a 3D vector, then in addition to X and Y, I also have a Z component. And so when I do that, um, just like I want to make sure my X and Y coordinates are perpendicular to each other, I now have a, a z coordinate, which is also perpendicular to both of them. I also want that to be a right-handed system um, because that way I can use my usual right-hand rule that you may have heard of for um, vectors, things like cross products that we're gonna see uh, near the end of this video. And so I wanna make sure my system's right-handed. Uh, the way I do that is I basically put my right hand, um, wanna make sure it's the right hand, that's why it's the right-hand rule. So right hand, um, stick that out in the direction of x. So you know, flat right hand, whatever direction x goes, um, usually to the right. So that's the way your hand's gonna go. And then curl your fingers. So when your hand's flat, your fingers can only go one way. They can only go that way. They can't go that way unless you have some special joints in your fingers, but I don't. Uh, so fingers only go that way. And so that basically what you wanna do is once your hand is flat out in the direction of X. You wanna curl your fingers and then point them in the direction of Y. So in this case, it'd be looking like that. So Y is going up. So my fingers are going up as well. Uh, my hand still is in the direction of X, but my fingers are now in the direction of Y. And your thumb will then point in the proper uh, Z direction. So in this case, if you've all followed along with that, or if you looked, in, uh, looked at me while I was doing that, you saw that my thumb was pointing towards me. So in other words, that my thumb was coming out of the page. So a proper um, right-handed system, uh, X going to the right as positive, Y going up as positive, Z comes out of the board as positive, um, as opposed to into the board. If it was into the board as positive, that'd be a left-handed system. And that's not what you want. You wanna make sure that positive comes out. And then after that, um, it pretty much follows the same procedure um, that we saw for two dimensions, I can write a vector in terms of its three components, X component, Y component, and Z component. So I have a new unit vector K that goes in the direction of positive Z. And that vector, any vector V can be broken down into its X component times I, plus its Y component times J, plus its Z component times K. Again, add those three vectors together, gives me back uh, my actual vector. Uh, same thing with magnitude. 
So again, essentially Pythagorean theorem, but with three components instead of two. X component squared plus Y component squared plus Z component squared. Square root of the whole thing is the length of that vector. Now, one thing that gets a little trickier in three dimensions is the direction. So in terms of a two dimensional direction, I generally just have one angle theta, um, the angle that that vector takes with respect to the x-axis. So usually have an angle measured with respect to the positive x-axis uh, measured counterclockwise usually. And that one angle is all I need to tell me which direction um, my arrow goes in two dimensions. However, in three dimensions, it gets a little trickier because now I need three angles. So these are called the direction angles, um, alpha, beta, and gamma. So alpha is my angle with respect to the x-axis. Beta is the angle with respect to the y-axis. And gamma is the angle with respect to the z-axis. And so basically what we have is the um, axes, the x-axis, the y-axis, and the z-axis all basically form um, the adjacent side of those triangles. So because it's the adjacent side, uh, my vector v is essentially the hypotenuse. So these angles are all given by cosines. So cosine of alpha is the x component, the x, divided by the magnitude of the entire vector. Angle beta, cosine of beta, is the y component over the magnitude of the vector. And cosine of gamma is the z component over the magnitude of v. So in three dimensions, I need three angles um, to completely specify the direction. Um, it's not necessarily the easiest way to do it. Easy way to do it, in my opinion, involves using uh, unit vectors. So again, we saw three special unit vectors already, i, j, and k going in the positive x, y, and z directions. Um, sometimes it's useful to have a unit vector that goes in a different direction. And that's entirely possible. So in this case, as an example, I want to have a unit vector that goes in the direction of some vector. Um, I'm just going to call that some vector capital A. Unit vectors, um, I call them little e. So anything little e with an arrow over top of it or a little any little e in boldface, um, that means a unit vector in some direction. I usually also have a subscript, like for this guy down here. E subscript A means my unit vector in the direction of A. Um, the Beer and Johnson textbook calls these guys lambda. Uh, Hibbler, I believe, calls them U, um, but I like you calling them E. So anything with an E vector is a unit vector in some direction. Again, the direction is usually specified in the subscript. So for unit vector in the direction of A, easiest thing to do is I know it has the same direction as A, but I want it to have a magnitude of one. Easiest way to get a vector to have a magnitude of one is to take its magnitude and then divide the vector by its own magnitude because that way um, scalar multiplication brings that magnitude right back down to one. So vector A divided by magnitude of A gives me my unit vector in that direction. In terms of components, I, J, and K, that's the X component divided by the magnitude in the X direction or I direction, Y component divided by the magnitude in the J or Y direction, and then Z component divided by the magnitude in the K direction. So anytime you do this, uh, this vector should end up with a magnitude of one. Um, you can find the magnitude through the Pythagorean theorem to check that if you want. But anytime you find a unit vector doing this, um, it should have a magnitude of one. And it'll also then be in that same direction that you want. So in this case, in the direction of A. Once I have that, um, I can write my vector A many different ways. So the easiest way is that A is just X component times I, Y component times J, Z component times K, and add those three up. So we've seen that before. Using the angles that we saw before, it's the magnitude of A times cosine of alpha. That's my X component. So that's in the I direction. Magnitude of A times cosine beta. That's in the Y direction. So that's now my Y component. And magnitude of A times cosine gamma, that's my Z direction. So that's my Z component. So that's how these um, direction angles 
correlate to the vector A. Or if I want to use my unit vector EA that I just found, all I need to do is take that unit vector, multiply back by the actual magnitude of A, and that brings me back to my vector A. Now, most of the vectors we've seen are essentially written uh, relative to the origin. So uh, we saw some vector that went from 0, 0 to 3, comma 2. Again, started at the origin. So the x component was 3, the y component was 2. Uh, sometimes you want your vectors to not start at the origin. And so general position vector can start anywhere. Um, so I can have any other point in space as my um, origin for this position vector. So if the origin is the um, point that I care about, is if that's the one that I want to meet the origin, then a position vector is easy. It's just x in the i direction, y in the j direction, and z in the k direction. So again, that goes back to our example of the vector 3, comma 2 in two dimensions. It was 3i plus 2j, 3 in the x direction, 2 in the y direction. But if you want some other point, so for example, in this case, I want my everything to be related to RA. So I have some position vector RA that goes to some point in space out here. And I want everything to be measured relative to that point. So essentially I'm kind of renormalizing this to be the origin. And so the way to get all these other position vectors, if I have RB relative to the origin, what I want is this R. So relative to RA as opposed to relative to the origin. Um, I just take RB minus RA. So the coordinates of uh, vector B minus the coordinates of vector A. So XB minus XA, the X coordinates in the X direction, YB minus YA, the Y coordinates in the J or Y direction, and then ZB minus ZA, the Z coordinates in the K direction. And that gives me now uh, this point RB relative to RA. Now, similar to finding unit vectors in the direction of a vector, so we found EA, the unit vector, in the direction of some vector A. Um, sometimes you want to know kind of which way a vector is going. For example, you have some force, maybe a cable pulling on an object. You know which way that force is going because the force is directed along the cable. So whichever way the cable is oriented, um, that's the way the force vector is going to go. But I want to know you know, which way is that? And so that's again where these unit vectors can come in handy. So if I have some direction or some vector R, so again, that's kind of which way is the cable going? Um, I can find the magnitude of R and then that division gives me the unit vector in that direction. And then if I know, for example, uh, how hard that cable is pulling, so maybe that cable has a hundred pounds of tension in it, um, I know the magnitude is then 100, magnitude of that force, which is a vector. And then I know the direction of the force because that's just this unit vector, ER. So I can write that as 100 times ER. And that's the uh, force of my cable pulling on my object. So essentially, my force, or whatever vector I want, F is just the magnitude of that vector times this unit vector in that direction, R over R magnitude. Um, so I'm going to write that as just f without an arrow. So without an arrow um, just indicates that it's the magnitude. So this f without an arrow is just the magnitude of f with an arrow um, instead of having to write the magnitude sign. And then I know that position vector r, again, if I'm looking at a relative to some other um, origin, xb minus xa in the i direction, yb minus ya in the j direction, zb minus za in the k direction, all added together is that vector. And then in terms of its magnitude, x component squared, y component squared, and z component squared, take the square root. So that's my uh, unit vector essentially times the magnitude f. And that's my new vector. So now a few things uh, to finish off today. Uh, two ways to essentially multiply vectors together. There's the dot product. Uh, the dot product of two vectors uh, gives you a scalar quantity. So two vectors dotted together 
um, gives back a scalar, just a number, no direction associated with it. Uh, there's two ways to define the dot product. So I'm going to take two vectors, um, A and B. And so vector A has some X component AX, some Y component AY, and some Z component AZ. And similarly for vector B, uh, BX in the I direction, BY in the J direction, BZ in the K direction. And these two vectors have some angle theta between them. So those are my two vectors. Uh, so the two definitions, two ways to find A dotted with B is I can take the magnitude of A times the magnitude of B times the cosine of the angle between them. And that will give me um, a number and that number is the dot product. The other way to do it is to take the two X components, AX and BX, multiply those together, take the two Y components, AY and BY, multiply those together, and take the two Z components, AZ and BZ, and multiply those together, then add them all up. And that should give you the same answer. So either way, you should get the same answer out of it. So either one's perfectly acceptable way to do this. Um, some properties of dot products, um, A dotted with B is the same thing as B dotted with A. I can see that by these definitions. If you just change A and B, um, nothing's gonna happen. If I have some scalar C, so if I come and multiply A dotted with B by some number, it's the same thing as if I took a scalar multiplication of that C with some with my vector A, then dotted, with B, dotted it with B, or vice versa. I could take the scalar C, uh, multiply it by vector B, and then dot that with vector A, um, all three, things are equivalent, should get the same number again. And there's kind of a distributive property. So A dotted with some two vectors, B plus D, so two vectors added together. I can distribute that dot product just like you distribute um, normal multiplication. So A dotted with B plus A dotted with D. Again, should give the same answer. Uh, two things that is useful for the dot product. Um, you can actually combine the two definitions. So the one involving the magnitudes and cosine and the ones involving um, the X components, Y components and Z components. And so you can find the angle between two, two vectors. If you don't know the angle between two vectors, one way to find it is to take the dot product, A dotted with B in terms of AX, BX plus AY, BY plus AZ, BZ. Find that number, find the magnitude of A, find the magnitude of B, and then divide all those together, take the inverse cosine, and that will give you the angle between the two vectors. Um, important thing is that if A dot B equals zero, uh, inverse cosine of zero is 90 degrees. So anytime the dot product equals zero, that means that A and B are perpendicular to each other. And that's sometimes a good thing to want to find out or to know. So that's one way you can find that out. The second thing is to find the components of a vector um, parallel and perpendicular to some line. So you could have the line be the x or y axis. And so one way to find the x or y components is to dot your um, vector with either the i or j directions, but it doesn't necessarily need to be i or j unit vectors, could be some other vector. So again, if you have some line, um, so this line A, has some unit vector. So EA goes along that line, same direction. And then if I want the component of this vector A along the component of vector big A um, along line small a, all I need to do is take the magnitude of that vector capital A times cosine of the angle, uh, which is same thing as A dotted with this unit vector. So this is called a projection of uh, this vector A onto the line. And that essentially gives me the component of vector A uh, that's parallel to this line. I could also find the perpendicular component um, because I know that a parallel and a perpendicular component add up to the vector itself. So the perpendicular component then is the entire vector minus its parallel component. So doing that procedure, 
I can then find um, components of this vector that are perpendicular and parallel to some certain line. And then second um, way to multiply vectors is called a cross product. And that is um, a method that gives you back a vector. So dot product gives back a scalar, cross product gives back a vector. And so vector C, I'm going to call it, is A cross with B. Um, there, again, there's two ways you can actually calculate what the cross product is. First one is to find the magnitude. So magnitude of C is magnitude of A times magnitude of B times sine of the angle. So that um, gives you the magnitude, but because this is a vector quantity, I need a direction as well. So again, sine theta here is the angle between my two vectors, just like in the dot product, but now it's sine instead of cosine. And then if I wanna find the direction of C, um, I need to use my good old right hand rule. And so um, A cross with B, I stick my hand flat in the direction of A, curl my fingers towards B, and then whichever way my thumb is pointing, um, that is my vector C. So anytime you do a cross product, um, the vector you get out of it is perpendicular to both um, A and B. So whichever two vectors you use in the cross product, the vector you get as an answer is perpendicular to both of them. So in terms of magnitude, A times B sine theta. In terms of direction, um, right hand rule gives you that. So again, that's one way to find um, the cross product. Some properties that we can see. So A cross with B, unlike the dot product, dot product didn't matter which one, which order you did it in. A dotted with B, B dotted with A was the same thing. Uh, for the cross product, that's actually not the case. A cross with B is actually the negative of B cross with A. Um, again, negative sign meaning opposite direction. So if you do it the opposite way, you get the exact opposite. So in that previous picture, thumb was pointing up. If you did B cross with A, thumb would be pointing down. So again, you start at B, go towards A, thumb starts pointing thumb points down in that case. If you want to do scalar multiplication, so this is similar to what we saw for the dot product, uh, C times some scalar C times the entire cross product of A cross with B is the same thing as if you took that little C scalar multiplication with vector A, then did the cross product, or similarly, A cross with um, C times B scalar multiplication then do the cross product. Um, all three, again, give you the same answer. And again, we have this distributive property, A cross with B plus D is the same thing as A cross with B plus A cross with D. So mostly similar um, properties other than this minus sign um, for the opposite order. As I mentioned, the second way to cross, to um, evaluate the cross product is with this big ugly formula. Uh, so A cross with B is AYBZ minus AZBY, and that's the X component. Uh, the Y component is AZBX minus AXBZ, and then the Z component is AXBY minus AYBX. Um, most people get that by taking the determinant of this matrix, so IJK, AX, AY, AZ, BX, BY, BZ take the determinant of that matrix and you'll end up with the same equation. Um, most people, when they take this determinant, put a minus sign here, and that is fine. When you do that, these will be reversed. So it is actually the same equation. I just take that minus sign out and make that a plus sign and reverse the order of these guys. So it is the same equation, um, even though it looks different because there's a plus sign here, it is the same equation. So that is, um, a vector review. So hopefully it was mostly a review. And um, next video, we actually start getting into real statics. So now we have enough background. Um, everyone knows what they need to know um, to start getting into actual static stuff. So we'll see that in the next video.